So let's talk Demonic, a 2015 movie produced by James Wan. If that mo if that name sounds familiar, he is the director of The Conjuring. Don't expect quite a sophisticated story here. This stars Frank Crossbones Grillo, who basically is a police detective uh, investigating a series of murders in a house. Now, this movie has a little bit of a trick up its sleeve in the fact that it actually takes place in two separate time zones. So basically, when the movie starts, we're kind of following, you know, Frank Grillo's sort of character. He's, he's called into this house to investigate this kind of bunch of you know, blood and bodies that have been found there. And we find out that these kids or young people have been doing some kind of seance. And we also then get the, the flashback stories that basically tell the story of why these kids were there and what actually happened to them and the kind of the events leading up to it. Now, what the movie does is it kind of flicks between the two storylines as the movie progresses. So one minute you'll be watching the you know, the actual police sort of detective story, and then it'll kind of flip back and go into a few scenes of the, of the flashbacks. And it'll do this sort of throughout the entire movie until it kind of sort of ties up at the end. So I have to say, you know, it's, it's a kind of a neat idea, but it comes across as a little confusing. And I have to say this film has a few plot holes in it as well. But let's talk about the two the two sort of timelines separately, first of all. So the the, the present day one, which really focuses on the kind of the police investigation, mainly on Frank Grillo's sort of detective and also these kind of like uh, sort of police psychologist who is kind of interviewing one of the kind of the, the remaining victims, really. Uh, I actually, when I first watched this film, I actually thought it would have been a good idea to maybe start the story you know, after these kids have been kind of murdered, and we don't ever really see them. You know, we never really see the what happens to these kids, and it's really down to the sort of you know our imaginations to you know to to, to guess what's happened to these 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 guys. And that would have been quite a cool story. And obviously, you could have had strange stuff then happening with the police investigation. But it's not the case because you know obviously you do get these flashbacks now. The acting, certainly in the kind of the present day sections, I thought was pretty good. Uh, Frank Br Frank Grillo is great; is a great actor, and you know you there. It's all professionally done. The flashback sequences, I don't think, were quite as well acted. They're not, they're not bad acting. Don't get me wrong, but they're not quite as they're not quite as good acting. But uh, they come across as a little bit sort of cliche sometimes, and a little bit too hype. And it, it really does fall into some of these kind of like haunted house cliches. I mean, stuff starts to happen. Yet they find a kind of convoluted reason to stay in the house and not kind of run away, which of course is a decision that they're going to regret. And like I said, it really I, I feel that there's some plot holes in this film. One of the interesting kind of things that this film tries to do is it. Well, the, when the police are kind of doing this investigation, they're actually watching footage that the kind of these younger people have taken. So you're going to get a bit of a found footage feel in certain scenes as well. Although we see some things being filmed, and I, it, it gets a little a bit confused because you think, are the police watching this? Is this what you know? This, is this the evidence that the police are watching, where we can clearly see kind of stuff, you know, weird stuff start to happen? Yet when we flip to the kind of the present day stuff, they're not watching all of it. They're only watching parts of the found footage film, you know, bits. And some of the kind of the weirdest stuff just seems to be blank. So it, it doesn't quite gel to me. It's a good setting. I think all the set design here is nice. It's professionally made. It kind of looks like, uh, you know, the, the, the lighting is all great and the kind of the location, everything like that. It's a, it feels like it's a professionally uh, made film, and obviously this is, as I say, produced by James Wan. It's also produced by the Weinsteins. But I don't think it has the kind of the sophistication that a lot of these kind of, like, like The Conjuring, like the kind of the sinister movies, uh, Insidious, things like that, basically, the, the kind of the, the cinema films that you get that have this kind of far greater level of sophistication that this one simply doesn't have. So it comes across as a little, a little bland, a little uh, predictable at times, and like I said, there are a few plot holes along the way as well. I, I have to say, I would have much preferred the story if it really focused on the kind of the, the police investigation after the fact, and then it kind of got into some weird shit from there. Although I guess that's kind of what a little bit like the Deliverers from Evil was a little bit like as well. So. It certainly wasn't a bad effort, but I don't think it's a particularly scary film. I don't think it's not a particularly gory film. It's kind of just a run-of-the-mill horror movie. So I'm going to give this movie a 5.5 out of 10. Have you seen it? What did you think of it? Leave me a comment, and I will look forward to seeing you next time. Bye for now.